There is a hormone in your body that helps you have energy, handle stress, and not get dizzy. When it's too low, your body does give warning signs, but it is usually hard for doctors to figure out what's wrong. That hormone is called cortisol, and it can be low for a few reasons. Sometimes it happens because the immune system attacks the adrenal glands. Other times it can happen if someone takes steroid medications for a few weeks or longer. In fact, millions of people who take long-term steroids may have their adrenal glands temporarily turned off without even knowing it. People often take steroids for problems like asthma, allergies, arthritis, skin rashes, or gut inflammation. Steroids can come as a pill, an asthma inhaler, a skin cream, nasal spray, or even an injection. If someone stops taking steroids too quickly after using them for a long time, or if they go through a big procedure or surgery, their body might not make enough cortisol, which can make them feel very tired, dizzy, and sick. Hello, I'm Dr. Baron, and in this video, I'll go over 10 signs of low cortisol to watch for. Sign number one, darkening of the skin. President John F. Kennedy had a very tanned look, partly because he had Addison's disease. Of course, he also liked spending time outdoors, which added to the tan. Addison's disease is a rare condition where their immune system attacks the adrenal glands so they don't make enough cortisol. Kennedy also suffered from other health problems like chronic back pain and low blood pressure, which are common in Addison's disease. When cortisol level is very low, the pituitary gland in the brain makes more of a hormone called ACTH. ACTH comes from a bigger protein. In the process of making ACTH, the body also releases MSH, which stands for melanocyte stimulating hormone. MSH tells the skin to make more melanin, the pigment that gives skin its color. This can make the skin darker all over the body. It often shows in skin creases, scars, and the mucous membranes inside the mouth near the teeth. Sign number two, persistent unrelenting fatigue. This is not normal tiredness. It's a deep, heavy exhaustion that doesn't improve with rest, sleep, or caffeine. Cortisol normally rises in the early morning to help you wake up, maintain blood pressure, and generate energy. When that morning rise is blunted, the day may begin with weakness, brain fog, and a sense of already being drained before anything has started. Sign number three is dizziness when standing. Low cortisol can contribute to low blood pressure especially when changing positions. You may feel lightheaded, dizzy, or briefly faint when standing up, particularly in the morning, during dehydration, or after illness. This symptom is an important clinical clue and should always be taken seriously. One of my patients had a minor knee surgery. After the surgery, she just couldn't get back to her normal self. She kept feeling exhausted, lightheaded, and dizzy. Every time she stood up, she felt off balance. At first, nobody knew why. Then then we found out that she had been getting spinal epidural steroid injections every few months for her back pain. These injections had turned off her own cortisol production, so when she underwent surgery, she was not able to produce cortisol to handle the extra stress on her body. We did a simple morning cortisol test and it was very low. Once we started the right treatment, her symptoms went away and she began to feel like herself again. Sign number four, craving salty foods. Strong salt cravings can be a signal of low cortisol. Cortisol works closely with other hormones to regulate fluid balance and blood pressure. When levels fall, the body may crave salt and symptoms may temporarily improve after salty foods. Sign number five, unintentional weight loss or poor appetite. While high cortisol is linked to gaining weight, low cortisol can cause the opposite. Reduced appetite, early fullness, or unexplained weight loss may occur because cortisol plays a role in metabolism and energy energy balance. Without enough cortisol, the body struggles to maintain a stable weight. Sign number six, abdominal pain, cramps, and nausea. Low cortisol can make your stomach and intestines feel upset. People might get cramps, feel nauseous, or have abdominal pain, even if they didn't eat anything bad. Cortisol normally helps keep inflammation under control, supports blood flow to the stomach, and balance salt and water in the body. When cortisol is too low, the stomach and intestines can get irritated, blood flow can drop a little, and the muscles in the gut can cramp. These changes can make your stomach feel queasy and sore, which is why people with low cortisol often have abdominal pain and 
nausea. Interestingly, low cortisol is a commonly unrecognized cause of GI problems. Many people see their gastroenterologist, get colonoscopies, ultrasounds, and CT scans, and everything looks normal, and they get frustrated that no one can tell them what is causing their abdominal pain. This is because the problem is hormonal and will be found with a blood test for morning cortisol and not with the standard GI tests. Sign number seven, feeling shaky or jittery because of low blood sugar. Cortisol helps keep blood sugar stable. When levels are low, blood sugar can drop too easily. This may cause shakiness, sweating, weakness, or a sudden anxious feeling when meals are delayed. That happens because cortisol normally tells the liver to release sugar into the blood. Without enough cortisol, your body doesn't get the sugar it needs for energy. Your muscles, brain, and other organs can feel weak and tired, which is why you feel shaky or jittery. This often happens between meals or in the early morning, when your body normally relies on cortisol to keep your blood sugar steady. Sign number eight, low mood or feeling emotionally flat. Cortisol helps your brain manage emotions and handle stress. When cortisol is too low, people can feel sad, tired, or emotionally flat. Things that used to be fun may not feel exciting anymore. This is not because someone is weak or lazy, it is because the hormone affects how the brain works. Interestingly, the famous writer from the 1800s, Jane Austen, often complained about feeling unwell and low-spirited. Some researchers believe she may have had adrenal insufficiency, which could explain her fatigue and low mood. Sign number nine, poor stress tolerance. Cortisol helps the body respond appropriately to physical and emotional stress. When levels are low, even small stressors can feel overwhelming. Situations you once managed easily now feel difficult to cope with. This is not emotional weakness. It reflects a stress response system that is not functioning at full capacity. And finally, sign number 10, severe symptoms during illness or injury. Cortisol helps keep your immune system balanced and help your body handle stress from illness, injury, or surgery. When cortisol is too low, infections can happen more often, last longer, or take more time to get better. In serious cases, people with significant cortisol deficiency may develop severe weakness, vomiting, confusion, or collapse. This is called adrenal crisis and requires urgent medical treatment because the body cannot mount a normal stress response. Testing for low cortisol begins with an early morning cortisol level drawn before 9 a.m. after a good night rest, when levels should naturally be the highest. If the results are low or borderline, an ACTH stimulation test is used to assess whether the adrenal glands can make more cortisol. If Addison's disease is suspected, especially in people with other autoimmune problems like Hashimoto's thyroid disease or type 1 diabetes, doctors may also check for antibodies. These include 21 hydroxylase antibodies and adrenal antibodies. These antibodies show whether the immune system is attacking the adrenal glands. Treatment and prevention of low cortisol. First, doctors try to avoid causing low cortisol. If someone needs long-term steroids, we use the low lowest dose for the shortest time and slowly reduce the medicine if it's been taken for a few weeks or more. This gives the adrenal glands a chance to start working again. If someone already has low cortisol, the main treatment is hormone replacement. People take medicines like hydrocortisone or prednisone to replace the cortisol their body is not making. Some people also need fludrocortisone to help balance salt and water. It's also important to take extra medicine during illness, surgery, or serious injury. Injury. This is called a stress dose and helps the body handle extra stress. With the right treatment and care, people with low cortisol can feel much better and return to normal energy and daily activities. Thank you for watching. If you want to know about signs of high cortisol, you can watch this video on the screen now. Please leave a like, subscribe, and post a comment. I really appreciate your feedback because it helps me make better videos for you. This is not medical advice and for informational purposes only. See you in the next one.